You are listening to the Ice House Podcast, hosting conversations with gritty Kiwi business owners and leaders and industry leading minds. Hey everybody, thanks heaps for tuning in to the Ice House Podcast. Today's episode is with Daniel Avis. He's a Leadership Development Program alumni and now a high performance coach. Uh, He has had such an incredible journey from burnout and understanding, getting a real understanding of uh, wellness and mental health as a business leader, being a CFO of a company here in New Zealand. Now uh, he has got a whole career in business coaching these high performance leaders um, and really supporting people. You can tell his real passion for people supporting the community and seeing people achieve and succeed great things. Uh, The conversation was really raw. Uh, He was extremely vulnerable, um, but gave such practical advice for owners and leaders on how to manage uh, their team's mental health and wellness, and also themselves as individuals. I highly recommend this episode to anyone within the Ice House community and beyond. I know everyone can uh, get some gold from what Daniel shares with us. As well, before we jump into the conversation, I wanted to highlight to our alumni that this year's Ice House Alumni Conference is happening on the 25th of May. That's a Thursday. It's a free event this year, and it's going to be jam-packed with incredible learnings from guest speakers and just a chance to come together as a community. Highly recommend that you register for that event. Head to our, our website to find out more. Let's jump into the conversation with Daniel now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of the Ice House podcast. I am Briar, the community manager, and today we're with Daniel Avis. He is a leadership development program alumni, number 37. So that was in 2019, we've worked out. He is now the founder of Adventure to Excellence, a certified high performance coach. Uh, And just really excited to have a conversation about his leadership journey, uh, what that looks like, what it has looked like, his learnings. Uh, So thanks, Daniel, for being on the podcast today. It's it's awesome. Real privilege to be here. And I'm I'm very excited to to just chat through some stuff. And um, yeah, just really excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. It's good. We had a conversation probably about a month ago now which just Mm -hmm. um yeah was really inspiring and it was great to talk to you and hear you know what life has looked like since the um leadership development program and yeah from that conversation we were like let's make this a podcast and uh uh create uh content from it that our community can get real value from and so i'm looking forward to creating that value with you today but before we get into those deep questions let's start with some quick fire um quick first quick fire question was what is your first what was your first ever job uh, so I was working working at the logger shop so it's a family family business and yes I probably started when I was 15 cutting up I was sharpening chainsaw chain and um yeah just sort of a workshop retail based business so cool good to good to do that during the school holidays love that favorite place ever uh, I just love the beach and, and nature. So here in Nelson, um, Tahuna, Tahuna Beach is fantastic. And it's actually just been just been flagged in the top 10 mm. of um, beaches around the world, I think, which is quite crazy. So yeah, uh, Tahuna Beach and the Grampians, which is a nice hill walk here in nature. Can't, can't go wrong with that. Love it. If you were to write a book tomorrow, what would it be about? Yeah, that's a good question. Because I get I get really excited in that space because I do want to write a book at some stage. Um I Go feel on. like I've actually got three in the back of my mind, but it's it's probably like that back from burnout or recovery from burnout and into the space where I'm in now where I'm just mm. living the dream and really excited about the work that I do. So cool. And I can't wait to yeah, deep dive into that journey mm-hmm. really soon. Uh when are you most relaxed, Dan? It's spending time with family and and at, at the beach. That's that's my zone, mm. especially in this awesome summer summers in um, New Zealand as well. Yeah, great. When are you most productive? Mm, probably in the space that we're in right now, like um, in, a, in a coaching call, and just yeah, just really living through what I'm incredibly passionate about. Um, mm. There's nothing, nothing really beats it. You feel you feel very fully alive in this space and the productivity is just an outcome of, of that feeling. So yeah, that's where, where I'm at there. Special. And book or podcast you recommend? Oh, there's, there's <laughs> quite a lot, but um, yeah. anything anything with Brendan Bouchard, uh, Simon Sinek, yeah. 
Uh, their books and podcasts are phenomenal. Jay Shetty, Jim Quick, um, that's that's sort of my go-tos. Mm, great names there. I'm also a fan of those. Uh, so I want to sort of open this conversation up and have a conversation about you. Mm-hmm. Who is Daniel? Who's Dan? And what are you really passionate about? Yeah, going through the big questions often. Yeah, often we start in, big. <laughs> yeah, often in a coaching space, these are these are the fantastic questions that really get get people going and mm. it's just interesting having them having them um question towards <laughs> me for a change which is cool yeah um so, yeah to right um me I, I i think i'm just a really caring person i just love to help people um but i'm also very driven driven and focused and i guess i've had that entrepreneurial mindset from an early age with my parents both being in business as well mm. and yeah. um yeah, and this is where that passion comes from me. Um, just incredibly ha- passionate about helping people, especially in the, the health and wellness side of things in business with like, the 15 years of experience that I've had from being an accountant and CFO. Um, mm. It's just bringing some, it's like I've grabbed all this information and it's all sitting in me and being able to be in a platform of coaching in this space uh, just, just gets me up um, really really brings me some purpose in life and it's it's very exciting to just even get paid for doing the stuff I love so yeah. um yeah love it that's very cool to hear and yeah to give people some context you know practically what does a day in the life of you look like hmm. um <laughs> mindlessly <laughs> wandering through the house probably <laughs> <laughs> it starts so just, that way yeah. <laughs> yeah just coming up with ideas but um typically I'll be getting up early in the morning going for a walk um just really curating my body and just activating those psycho- psychology and physiology in the sense of bringing my energy into the best for each day and mm-hmm. then I'm on coaching calls I'll have many breaks between them um so that's that's mainly my mornings, and then I'll be picking my daughter up from preschool at sort of early afternoon and sort of family afternoon. So can't cool. go wrong with that. It's just a real, real beautiful balance that I've been able to curate in the twelve months or so that I've been doing this. It's it's amazing. Oh, cool! And you can just tell you're in your flow. You're like mm-hmm. in your in your zone, and uh, such a great place to be. Um, mm-hmm. With that what uh from what you do you know what what is your purpose or your motivation to get up every morning yeah it's there's a personal element and then there's like a selfless element and it's Mm. I just want to fully express myself as much as possible and it's been such a great when I reflect on like it's only 19 months that I've been a certified high performance coach and I remember after a hundred days of being a coach, it felt like it had two years of personal development through that. And you sort of don't realize when you become a coach, you're, you've already, you've committed yourself to lifelong personal development, which I, which I love. Um, and mm. it's just that feeling for me personally is incredible, especially coming from the dark places of burnout of where I was through that four year journey. Yeah. And the, the benefit is, is what really wakes me up is helping other people and helping them through a space where they they can't necessarily see the light they're in a dark space and not only bringing them into the light it's it's adding extra to that so then they start to be, become fully that vibrancy and feeling fully alive mm. um, which really really gets me going especially at, when I see people come through the just one or two coaching sessions and they're just a new person at, sometimes it feels like I'm not doing anything and I'm just a witness to this greatness of these people that are committed to it and uh, they're coming in there fully ready to grow and it's um yeah it's quite mind-boggling what I'm doing now and just seeing the results with people it's very very special and rewarding for me and and for the person so it's, it's pretty cool it would be so rewarding and I also want to touch on that point of you know through becoming a certified um, performance coach, actually what that does for you personally, you know, like it actually, you feel like you've had your own coaching experience and self-development personal, um, you know, wellness experience, which uh, is really, really important. And yeah, keen to touch on that. Uh, Now, you know, this question is probably even bigger than who is Dan. Um, What, tell, tell us about your, you know, your career journey and how it actually led to where you are now, uh, a venture of excellence. What was that whole journey like? Yeah. So it's sort of, 
it summarizes a little bit that adventure to excellence. It's always it's always been that striving point for excellence that's um has always been there. And the reason I sort of chose the adventure is that it's there's a lot of fun that's been along the way and often it's it's challenging and you have to be a little bit more daring to step out of mm-hmm. the comfort zone and that's that's where that adventure comes into it and it sort of highlights where I've been in life and where I want to head as well. It's just a common theme I see for myself and other people. So it all it all really started. So when I left school, um, I went straight into accountancy. I think I going back then, see this is 2007. I think I might have finished a physics exam the week before and then started work straight away the following week. Like on I think Whoa. it was like the third of December back then. Uh-huh. and got straight into it, um, did study through Nelson Marlborough Institute of Technology, NMIT, which was really great because I was able to um, work as an accountant, but also also I could go, go across and walk to do a lecture and then I come back to work and it was quite an awesome period of time. So mm. worked myself up into a CFO, uh, not a CFO, a chartered accountant position. Yeah. Yeah. And after, yeah, did that for seven years, and just really loved the growth and then I got to a point where jumped into a family business a really innovative progressive group of companies um, worked into a CFO position there and yeah there's like 14 different business entities across across a range of different industries so it's forestry engineering um, went into by the time the the engineering manufacturing business started to take off it started building forestry equipment for the for the international market as well. So it led to 2015, going to Chile, setting up a branch, um, travel to the US and Canada for distribution agreements. So you've got a young, growing yeah. business and yeah. the growth trajectory was pretty crazy. And as a CFO, you're stuck with the, the cash flow dynamics of that growing business as well, as well as the international travel. And it just it highlights to me, we did like a triangular of the Americas, so Chile, Canada and the US in two weeks and there's about 55 hours of fly time there and I didn't even I couldn't comprehend how much time we spent at the airports just going through that and it was those are elements of that journey of like really setting up some of these businesses and but it sort of also highlighted that just keep going with it and um yeah you got into a space where like you, you sort of get into a space where you don't know how to ask for help or you see like this sort of phenomenon you, you as you as you build into you you get really great at your job and then you excel at your job and then you get promoted and also all of a sudden you're leading teams yeah. they're really good in that space and next year next the pressure starts to come on and, and the default but like you don't really get those lessons in leadership or you don't get those lessons in how to be a manager and when the pressure starts to come on, when the stress comes back on, the default is, is like, I know what's easy for me. I know what's really excellent. You start diving back into the work and doing it yourself. So yeah, I really, through my whole journey, I've taken a lot of responsibility with just as an accounting clerk, when someone's results haven't been as good and you see these businesses struggle, I've, I've always wanted to help them so much. And that's... I guess I got caught inside a business where I was like, no, nah, I need to save costs. I want to do this all myself. And I went down mm-hmm. a slippery slope to burnout. Didn't know how to ask for help. Um, I think some of my first challenges was actually guilt. A lot of, that's like one of the heaviest emotions that we can feel and a low frequency emotion. So mm-hmm. when I'd have a day off, I would feel like the business is going to fall over. And wow. so you, you spend your, your day off sick, but you're constantly in this turmoil of guilt. So you can't even recover for the day. So, um, mm. or the week and yeah, it, it sort of got to around, around 2018 started falling off a little bit or getting into a patch where you, you're taking sort of a day off a month or a day a fortnight. Next thing you know, you it's like, a sort of two weeks off and it you sort of recover and you get back and you, you start to get some hire someone get some more on your team than that um and then it started 
you, you get back in the driver's seat. I think I remember early 2019 just started to actually step back. And it's that phenomenon or the mindset of being in the business, uh, you're from being in the business versus working on the business. Yeah. And that was really great that you just constantly pulled into these this high vibrant business. So I, it was 1st of November, 2019. I, I through this period of time, uh, we had got married, had a first baby. I'd changed my role from CFO into more of a commercial operations manager because I just lo- yeah. I wanted to be in front of the people. I wanted to help that change rather than being behind the numbers so much. Yeah. And I, through that change in role, I discovered Ice House as well. And we thought just we'll get some more leadership skills around me in that space. And everything was going awesome and until it wasn't. And mm. next thing I know, I had a big panic attack on the 1st of November, 2019. And mm. that was a really big wake up call for me. Um, brings up a lot of emotion just talking about it mm. as well. Uh, so mm. I was just at the foot of my bed, putting my business socks on and I just the heavy breathing come in hand on my heart as well and my wife come in thinking oh it it was like I was having a heart attack and um yeah I've never experienced that before I didn't know what was going on but Mm. what had sort of happened is it's like I sort of stepped back from it a little bit and what brought me out of it was I started cracking up laughing which is a a weird response and it was more like it was was probably like the nervousness is like wow this is different you sort of laugh it off or wow I was quite fascinated with it too because my body had taken over and had sort of got me away from that mind my mind just going through all of these things and the stress loops that you're constantly going to it just brought you back to your breath yeah and it's through through that I started asking these questions of what makes us human why am I in this state how have I got myself into the space? And these are these questions that I've constantly asked myself over the last four years or so that, that helped me recover through that place. So at that point on, I had to have two months off work, yeah. which is really great. Um, my employee, my employ, employer just supported me so well through that process. But when I come back to work in 2020, I tell you, you know, with the, like the All Blacks, they'd get a concussion and uh, they, they probably could play, but you don't you still got those concussion symptoms you want to you want to have that full healing of the mind it was like I'd come back to work still in that environment yeah. or still feeling like that and yeah that went on I, I started getting myself better um and then I think it was February 2021 I had a I was feeling really great I was thinking the interest rates are down um I'll start looking into some other side projects or yeah, I think with interest rates down, it's like I'll get another rental property behind my belt. And literally the next day I had another panic attack and it was like another metaphor kick to the head to say, hey, Daniel, mm. you're not through this just yet. Mm. And yeah, from that point on, I went more into a strategic role within the business. I went down to four-day weeks. I changed up my nutrition. I stopped drinking like I did all of these different elements to start as I I need to take this a bit more seriously um wow and next thing I know I just it's like I was I was back on form again but it just wasn't the I didn't have that real high passion for everything again and so I took off November November took off time off work we had a best summer we're doing everything on a budget as well so it's beaches rivers Mm-hmm. Um, with with my young family and it was just the best best summer I got back into reading books and just like I mentioned before the Simon Sinek's Brenda Bouchard Jim Quick uh, Jay Shetty all mm-hmm. of that started to just get me alive again and just reading different different things just opened my whole horizon and next thing I know I read a book on coaching and huge paradigm shift I thought I understood what coaching was and just something hit massively there really moved me um mm. next thing I know it's sort of April April last year uh I get on a webinar with Brendan Bouchard and he talks about how he was coaching and really wicked 
space to be on and there's a, a webinar of about a thousand people on there worldwide and they had a QA and a at the end and I was just like I really looked up to Brendan Bouchard or still look up to him so much that I wasn't going to you know you raise your hand on a zoom call I wasn't going to do that and I was sort of fretting and I walked away for a bit and then I come back and I'm like hang on Daniel there's just just do it you never know what might happen wow so there's there's 20 other people with their, their hands raised on the call and I'm like, oh, I probably won't be selected. And then next thing, I'm the last one called up there. I'd completely forgot my question. Mm-hmm. And I just spoke about basically what I've just a sh- more short end of what I've just talked about now of burnout, CFO, mm-hmm. not sure what I'm wanting to do right now. Wow. And he coached me for three minutes. So my first exposure to coaching was with the number one high performance coach in the world. And this is, that's just, that blew me away. And the three things that come out of that for me was to, to back yourself, trust your instincts and follow through with coaching. And I was just like, sort of that cloud nine moment. Amazing. I then, yeah, I jumped into his certified high performance coaching the following month. and. It's been very rewarding the whole way through. And it sort of did this 360 for me because there was a there was a moment when I was really, really struggling through that that four-year period of burnout. And I remember being in my lounge down here, sort of just in the fetal position, crying. Um I just it was like I was trying to scream it off of me, or I wasn't mm. screaming, but I was just like, take this away. I'm ready, I'm like ready to serve. I just take this away and I'll just do what I need to do. And it was sort of like I said that out loud Mm. and I said, I'm ready to serve. And probably two years later, I'm in the graduation process of becoming a certified high performance coach. And so this gets me going too. Mm -hmm. Brendan Bouchard's leading you through sort of a meditative, um, a meditative graduation process. And you get to the end of it again, hand on heart. And you got your eyes closed and it's, I am ready to serve. I am ready to serve. I'm ready mm-hmm. to serve. And it's, it's like that 360 of struggling, saying out loud, I'm ready to serve to being right on the edge of that adventure to excellence for me right at that moment. And mm. that's, I get emotional about it because I'm so passionate. And it's, that was literally nine or 10 months ago. I'm just absolutely living the dream now. Wow. I'm back from burnout and I'm just ready to deliver some awesome service to people out there. So I, it, it all comes back to that. I'm, I'm ready to serve. Wow. Oh, you're making me so emotional. I don't, know how, you, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you can unpack that. I'll go back from that, but um, wow. the world that sort of all happens. I'm a firm believer of everything happening for a reason. And I, I now, as the struggles that we do go through, it's it's once it's once you've actually got through it you can actually see the gift in it mm, and I see it so many times in like old music that I'd listen to and now I listen to it again it's got like a new meaning to it and there's mm. one that sort of talks about tragedy and then it leading to clarity and I was like well I've never I've listened to that as a teenager or in my early 20s and that and now it's just got this different meaning and it's that burnout that's given me this clarity of life and this clarity of purpose this clarity of service and I get to spend this time with my family as well like I get a really nice dynamic so just living the dream wow totally thank you so much uh, for your vulnerability Uh, it's so important to be real and to talk about you know, what this actually looks like in a really practical sense, you know, that picture of you sitting at the end of your bed, putting on your business socks is I'm sure um, a picture a lot of our community can relate to. And Mm. um, yeah, going into that detail of what that practically looked like for you, um, I'm sure has, uh, and I hope unlocks um, something for someone listening right now. Um, or listening in the future and so yeah thank you so much for being vulnerable uh, Dan and sharing your your story Um, and and in that moment you know you're going you know well 
what is essentially what is the point of life right is is the questions you're asking yourself and to get to a place where you feel so on purpose and now serving um those around you the community around you from your experience yeah I, I don't think it gets better than that you know and it's and it's cool to hear that beautiful balance like you said you know earlier in the conversation that you now have in life um you're never going to get to the end of your life and go you know yeah darn it I should have stayed in that you know position and got that second rental or you know whatever it's it's really all about mm. the impact that yeah. you have on people um and so I appreciate you sharing that story with us and that that experience yeah um, I'd love yeah. to talk really practically, you know, uh, you, yeah, the last few years have just been crazy, um, for business owners specifically, um, you know, it's been really hard. It has been really hard at times. I'd love if you could share some, you know, personal advice that you have for owners and leaders who, you know, could be struggling with their mental health or wellness. And actually this conversation is kind of triggering something in them. Is there any advice that you have mm -hmm. for those people? Yeah, I think you mentioned a fantastic word and that's vulnerability. And mm -hmm. there's a massive amount of strength with that. Um, and being just vulnerable and asking for help. Um, this is where through my journey, I was able to get that help. I, I think early on, it was sort of a stress coach that helped me with that first phase of guilt that I talked about. Yes. yes. Um, and when through my struggling, you sort of, it's always like, I'll get a, you need some resilience and it's, it's got that heaviness to it or like, mm -hmm. not as fond of the word resilient. You know, it comes back to sort of that analogy of like if you if a tree's been uprooted or it's just about falling over and you tell it to be more resilient, it's not going to be able to respond. It's it's just about on its point that it's falling mm. off. Mm. But when you actually think about that tree, like when I when I'm imagining that that tree's alone in a desert, there's no nutrition around it. It's and it's about to fall over. Whereas if you have that tree in a forest when it falls over, it's actually leaning on the others. Mm, and brilliant. what happens is while it's it's leaning off this way, it's got this new growth and the tree continues to grow. Yeah. And it's a, a really fantastic metaphor in terms of where I've been as well with burnout. This is where I wanted to go. And all of a sudden this little growth, a leaf, and then that turns mm. into where I'm at now blossoming in some aspect. Yeah. So it all starts with that vulnerability. Um, we're talking about how things, you mentioned about how things are really hard. With vulnerability, it's got that soft aspect to it. And there's, there's a phenomenon that I've come across in the sense of when we stand up as leaders, it's like we're expected to be really strong. We're expected to have, have our shit together for a better word. Um, yeah. And... The, the people that we're leading look up to that. And so when there is a crisis going on and our leaders are really fronting up, what's happening is those people under our leadership are looking up thinking, well, wow, there's a lot of pressure out here. There's a lot of crisis. My boss, my leader, has, they're, they're doing really well. They're, they're still standing strong. But I, I'm, I'm really struggling here. I mm. can't handle this. And then they start that really, really um, prominent question of what is wrong with me? Yeah. And that can be one of the most debilitating questions to ask ourselves. And I know that's what I did through my burnout journey. Mm. So when our leaders become vulnerable, when our leaders show that they are human and that they're struggling and it can be just that subtle vulnerability of, hey, I'm being strong for you guys. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but I'm also struggling. So you might need to be a little bit patient with me. Yeah. It's it's that it doesn't have to be crying in front of everyone, but it's also enabling that, enabling people to see you're human as well. Yeah. Um great. To, to me, it all starts with that vulnerability. And I'm we at through my whole life, I've probably been a bit sensitive or really empathic in that space and this is what makes me a great coach but I also I always thought it was a weakness too 
uh, it's, there's a lot of strength that goes with that that trait or attribute of vulnerability. Mm. Oh, it's so powerful. And uh, yeah, I think there's some quote, I probably must say it, but um, those those love a leader that is real over always right, you know, always real over always right. And I just mm-hmm. think that's so true is the power that comes from a leader saying, hey, I'm, I'm actually struggling, struggling here. Like you said, not having to, mm-hmm. you know, um, feel like you have to cry in front of everyone or show that mm-hmm. deep, deep emotion um, if you don't feel comfortable, but going, I'm just going to be real here. It's mm-hmm. it's tough. Give me some time, you know? And I think the people around can go, oh, I'm not the only one, you know, yeah. and have that moment. So, so true. Um, yes. Appreciate that. That's great advice. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's heaps of misconceptions in this space um, around, you know, what is mental health and wellness and mm-hmm. um yeah, I think people have a lot get a lot of the wrong idea sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, what's a misconception you notice people have in this space that you want to debunk? Interesting question. Hmm. Um, it's it's probably just it's probably more around just the um, more around just burnout in general. Like it's yeah. Someone can probably go through a week and feel really tired and really exhausted. And then they feel like they're burnt out. And then the weekend comes, they recover, and then it's really great. And it's not taking anything away from that. It's just when that's on repeat and it becomes, it turns into that loop of chronic stress where all of a sudden you start to, you want to have 10 days, you go for a 10 day holiday, for example, and you come back to work and it's still, that energy and that vibrancy is still not there. Um, it's it's drawing a line where the, the burnout side of things comes into it. And for me, oh, there's some fantastic research around burnout. Um, Christina Mishluck, she she identified six causes of burnout. And the, the big one for me was alignment to values. Mm. And so if you're going to work and you're working against who you truly are and you're also overworked and you are not getting the reward you need and you you're just really struggling in that space and you you're just wanting to push through and you should do that and then the guilt glides with that and you keep going down that path yeah that's that's that those first signs of burnout that um can really start to put people through that that space and yeah yeah it was four years of struggle for me and yeah, it's just uh, you can't even explain it. It's like a deep, the way it's like a deep tiredness in your bones, or like uh, it's very heavy. Um, so yeah, it's it's understanding where that's at, and I'm not sure if I'm even answering your question now, no, but you're right. yeah, it's understanding where where you're at in that space and getting out of those loops of busyness and. Um, that busyness that can lead to burnout and taking care of ourselves and, and living living within our, our values. So then our true bit, we're curating our true best self. And this this is a lot of where this, the coaching side of things comes into it and really awakens people into that space. Mm, so true. And I love that you, yeah, picked out burnout as a misconception essentially because, mm. because it does look different to every person. Mm. Um, others can find it hard to relate to someone else you know let's say you're working within a business and one of the employees has to take two months off like yourself um to you know because of a burnout situation Mm -hmm. or to recover from um, from something it's very hard for the other employees to understand especially if they haven't had their own burnout journey Mm -hmm. of the importance of that time uh and and why that's so needed as a human and I think it's important to uh you know just talk about the idea that burnout can look different to different people um but it is very real and um at the end of the day mental health needs to be more important than anything else when it comes to a human um within an employee situation or not uh Mm. so yeah love that it's great would love to talk a bit about your coaching specifically Mm. as well you're now you know in that high performance coaching phase um yeah let us know a little bit about a highlight and and also a challenge in the coaching that you do now highlight is just 
I love it. Um, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I love the results that people are getting through it um, and sort of taking a back step around with that. So the, the certified high performance coaching, there's a lot of um, what Brendan Bouchard had done was I think the world's best or the, the most research around high performance through the High Performance Institute. And what they studied was the what makes people really successful, like the sort of that top five five percent. And they put a lot of research in behind this to see what one Brendan Bouchard wanted to test his own coaching for the last 15, 20 years. But two was two was just really checking in what what habits lead to that and what what happened is they distilled all the research study down and what happened at the top of that list and it's like the cream rose to the top and there were mm. six high performance habits and that's clarity energy courage necessity productivity and influence so hopefully i got all six there for you yeah, <laughs> um, great yeah, yeah. So it's it's making those a daily habit. And that's that's in essence what happened for me is when I had that period of time off, I spent I think I did like 17 pages journaling just on seeking clarity and what that meant for me. And what I've written I wrote down was I think in hindsight actually, and this is a cool tool for people to grab, is throughout the last couple of years of journaling, I used journaling to help me get through the burnout process and mm. and really get used to my own thoughts and you, you start getting these little epiphanies and what I'd written down was like the top five things I'd loved right in that time so mm -hmm. throughout the course of like two years I had five scenarios that were peppered and it was the same thing of like human behavior health and wellness all of these things that really brought that that aliveness to me and through the clarity side of things um, I was constantly seeking, oh, what's next? What's the job? What's the role? But I wasn't seeking the clarity of what I loved. Mm. And it just so happened to be, I'd found what I loved. I found what I love to study, what I'm curious about. And it comes to trying to answer those questions during the panic attack is what makes us human? How can we tap into our human potential? Yeah. Just so happened to be, I found that and this high performance coaching come along and completely aligned for it. So if we get really familiar with clarity of who we are, what we love, um, that that's sort of the this, this, this starting point to, to the high performance curriculum that I do coach to. And mm. the first half of it's focusing in on those, those, those high performance habits. Um, and so cool. it's quite amazing because it's, it's designed really for, for a human. It's, it's got a lot of holistic elements. And once you start bringing through as people go through the journey, it, it's like um, my accounting side of things, it's like compound interest, but it, I call it compound coaching. It's every one you go through, it just it, it, you exponentially grow and you, it's all of the different elements start pulling together. Yeah. It's quite quite amazing how as little as like four sessions in, and the fourth session's the courage session, and people were just like, what just happened? And wow, this is amazing. And that's, that's what I really love about it. And it's, it's the likes of people coming in and they're a bit apprehensive around talking and being vulnerable and, and they come out of that space. And the, the thing that I really love and what my craft is to curate that safe environment for people. Mm. Um, I didn't mm. realize until one of my clients mentioned that to me and I was, and it sort of hit home and a lot of emotion come up for me and I'm like, oh, yeah, I actually am doing that. And yeah. It's in that environment they feel like they can be themselves and, and really flourish. You add these frameworks of high performance on top of it and they're, they're flying. So, yeah. which is quite cool as a realization now is my logo on my business is, is an eagle sort of mm -hmm. flying and taking off. So that's, that's quite a cool synergy there. <laughs> very, very cool. And so true, like you are creating that safe place for someone that, um, you know, especially when you're in that high performance space, I'm sure you're uh, coaching a lot of leaders and a lot of people there at the top. And mm. if they don't have someone that they feel they can lean on within the business, how cool that they can have a safe place through your coaching and through what you're, you know, you're delivering through that, yeah. uh, which is great. 
Is there any challenges in the, in the coaching work you do? It's hard because um, it's like a hard question because it is challenging, but it's it's got all this love tied to it or growth for me too. So it's yeah, go with it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not like the the classic definition of a challenge, but yeah, mm, totally. Yeah, that's cool. And a sign that you just love what you do. <laughs> yeah. I'm not and saying it, that, you know, having a challenge doesn't mean you don't love it. You know, there yes. is always challenge in what you do. But um, yeah, I can tell. Maybe that- I'm like, um, I've got um, a film over the top of me and maybe my mindset's so strong on that, that the challenge is the love as well. So I'm, yeah. I'm not seeing it as a challenge or a it's quite a weird question. I feel like I'll probably do some journaling on that just to, um, <laughs> to get that one. I've bought something more. up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> no, it's very cool. I love it. Um, actually, I think I think what would what actually does come up for me is it's when when people are really struggling. Um, yes, of and, course. And sometimes they're not in the space of even going through the the coaching curriculum as such. Um, yep. But it's that's the challenge of so hard to explain but even just witnessing that yeah it's when they're in that state of mind it's and the stress that they're going through can get really difficult Mm. and even for me because I'm so empathic about it but at the same time after the calls and they've got a big smile on their face um Mm. that's that's what it's all about yeah can't beat it no that's great I want to talk a little bit about you know you've got your sort of um sort of catching it before it all happens sort of thing and you've got you okay we've got to be reactive here um after the fact what are some practical ways that people can actually protect themselves when it comes to their mental wellness you know ahead of feeling those uh maybe red flags of burnout what's ways people can okay okay I'm actually feeling all good now Mm -hmm. but I want to protect my future self yeah yeah I think a lot of that comes to that alignment of values and Mm. it was it was quite interesting because I did that work really early on in the burnout phase for me and wrote down all my values and and sort of stepped it out to which ones really apply to work, which ones do I need in work. I know that work supports a lot of that. And what I went through there was, I think I had 12, I have 12 values that I need to have in work. And at the time, I had four big yeses, four no's, and four maybe. So mm. I don't even know why I must have been doodling. And I did a pie chart of it. And it just gave me a really good visual representation of, I'm right at 50-50. No wonder I'm feeling so 50-50 about work. Mm. And it was because of these different values that aren't lining up. Yeah. So if you can, it's it's a lot, because I guess with businesses, more and more businesses these days, are, they're, re- they're getting more and more awareness and alignment with their, their vision, mission, and values. Yeah. So it's about doing that on a personal level. Yes, and, so true. And when you, I think, a couple of weeks ago, I had a had a um, local coaching summit here in Nelson, and it was phenomenal. And what I realized for me personally is I want to be really successful, but I don't want to be so successful that I can't fulfill it and I enter back into the burnout territory. But like literally on the last day, I realized if I'm still in alignment with all my values, I will not go back into burnout. Yeah. And I, I feel that belief in it. And it's it's all, but that's one of those six flags. And the other ones is an un, unmanageable, unsustainable workload, mm-hmm. feeling of lack of control, lack of recognition. Like it doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be pay. Sometimes it can be just, it comes up for that, that quote. Um, I can survive two months on a good compliment. Mm, so true. And, and then that's where the, the community side of things and the analogy of the, the tree that's supported by the rest of the forest, like the, the community's important in that space. And ultimately that lack of fairness starts to come up and it, you just, yeah. It's, mm. and those are all those six 
flags which the foundation of it comes back to the getting really aware of your values so if anyone listening to this it's it's as simple as I think what I did right at the start of my burnout recovery was write down all my values which ones do I need that are in work or supported in work mm. and secondly I think I fa- recently found an old note on my on my iPhone and it I wrote down the feelings that I want to feel mm. so it was a combination of those two and, and the feelings that I want to feel are actually the feelings I'm feeling now awesome and it's amazing full cycle and and so it's emotions and feeling that really dictate the quality of our life. Mm. And yeah, it's, it's quite funny how all these, it's easy to connect the dots as you look back. And it's quite fascinating to me. I felt like I didn't do anything special in this world of burnout. But at the same time, there was some different tacks and different strategies that I'd did actually do which I'd love to love to bring out in the future in this burnout space because I'm I really it's hard for me to see and even when I catch up with people for a coffee and they talk about they're in a group of other high performing people and they're just really struggling with stress Mm -hmm. and it it brings up a lot of emotion because I know exactly what that feels Mm -hmm. what that feels like and it's there there are better ways out there and I want people to know that there is help there mm. and there's an element of me speaking to myself back then yeah there, there's help there there's coaches there's there's therapy if you need to go down that way mm. just just talking to another human it, it, it really it really opens opens that that um thoughts feelings just opens the that chest or cage of of burnout that a lot of people can and and chronic stress that people can really struggle with and it's there's books on my shelf around community and be, like the opposite of loneliness is belonging wow, there's yeah. one book that's called growing young and it's all about connection mm. um so really just connecting with people and getting help where you needed and yeah. whether it's a coaching coaching or counseling space yeah Oh, you're making me emotional because yeah, like even in a role like mine, like community manager, mm-hmm. it's all about the people and it's all about connecting them with others so that they feel seen and valued and supported on this journey specifically of of being a business owner um, and leader. Uh, but just being a human, just being a human right. being, having people around them that they feel like they can open up to with people that get it, people that mm-hmm. go, I am thankful you said that because I felt like that two weeks ago, you know, Mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's completely agreed that that's what it's all about. Have you come across any hesitations around this sort of high performance coaching? You know, you're talking to people and they either they don't get it or or they're, they're nervous to jump into it. Yeah. I think um, it's funny. I should actually try and find the testimonial someone's mm-hmm. written for me um which is basically saying that they're really apprehensive quite nervous coming into it yeah. um and then they're saying hand on heart it's the best thing that they've ever done um, wow. and that's where it just hits me in the heart so powerfully of the how passionate i am about this work yeah it's like i'm Amazing. leaning in so much to my camera right now <laughs> it's great i'm right in here great. um and they mentioned that it's a it feels like a safe and healthy way to come out of it, mm. even through spaces of of where they've where they had counselling or therapy in the past. Just those words of healthy and safe environment to to really grow and come out of things. And yeah, totally. We're we're really all this the my style of coaching is really it's that influence process and and for better decision making and ultimately a better life and I want to bring people into the present moment and then how we can get into that that future space and it's just going through these different modalities you release the release the parachute that's if you imagine a person running and they've got one of those parachutes on them it's just all I'm doing it's I'm just subtly snipping the and the, the people going through it, they're just getting awareness around those and they start sniffing those parachutes that are holding mm. them back too. Mm. Um, 
I yeah. can't even remember what the question was, but I just love love the space and the the environment that's curated through coaching. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. It's so cool. I want to ask you a question um, uh, with the hat on of I'm listening as an SME business owner mm -hmm. and I've got people on my team that I am aware are struggling. Mm -hmm. How can owners and leaders of these small, medium-sized businesses support their teams better, support the individuals that are openly struggling um, with burnout, mental health, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think you mentioned a lot of those words around of community and being a human. Yeah. There's some key words that you you just mentioned before. So it's it's really taking those things and adding the vulnerability into that space. And it, it's just all it can be is just having a one-on-one -on -one coffee with someone or just being a human and, and being empathic and caring. And it's I keep feeling like this this journey or the way I always call it the adventure to excellence, a new thing that's just come up for me recently. It's 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 like you've got a framework of the environment that we're needing to be really safe. There's safety, then there's stress management where all the wellness side comes into, and then there's success. Yes. But for the the feeling of safety and struggle and not coping, empathy is that precursor to help people in that space which then drives them across here to excellence yeah. and that's where the success sits so yeah. just just being a human and letting go of the the titles and status of what we where we stand up for and in, in each of our businesses um you hit the nail on the head Brian so just mm -hmm. being a human yeah totally yeah and uh I've he I heard the hear this a lot, you know, Liz Wobberspoon, even our CEO says that, you know, leadership is not a position, it's a posture. Yeah. And I think um, you know, one, that means anyone can be a leader, but two, as a leader, um, you know, title's one thing, sure, but how can we lead our people um through the way we're postured, the way that we make them feel valued? So yeah, completely agree, Dan. That's really cool. Um, I want to turn a bit in this conversation to uh, your ice house experience mm -hmm. um, would love to hear how you heard of the ice house and how you got involved yeah so when I had that role change back in August of 2019 is when I heard about it and I think yep. it was one of our was it in the business we had a have a advisory board and one of those mentioned how how great the ice house was in awesome. that space so um yeah, it was a pretty quick decision in terms of making making that choice. And yeah, it was, it was quite amazing because at that time we were going through a lot of struggles with systems and ERP systems. And mm -hmm. you feel like as a business, you're really alone here and you've got these same problems. And you jump into this leadership course up in Auckland and there's 23 other individuals and they all got the same, same <laughs> sort of similar issues. And it was just like, oh, I'm not the only one. It was... Yeah. All of a sudden it's like a flick of a switch and that that community is there and that's that was quite a really great light bulb moment that went off for me it was very cool what did you get from the program you know you look back on that now and obviously you're in a completely different um, headspace and position mm -hmm. and and job career uh, but in terms of the ice house program what impact did that have on you I had so just as you said what impact it had on you uh, just goosebumps just come over my mm -hmm. shoulders it had a, a dramatic impact on me um I still use some of these tools today and it it helped me understand how I work and different I guess um, attributes that I do have and what I lean into now which also align with my values which is quite crazy and I still distinctly remember it going through one of the the team management surveys, I think it was. Mm, yes. And it had these different modalities of are you structured or flexible or are you analytical or creative? And I remember being with my peer and he was he was giving me a bit of stick because I was the only accountant out of 23. And he's like, no, you're going to be structured. You're going to be analytical. <laughs> and I still remember the numbers. So out of a pool of 519,000 people at that time, it was only like, 2.3% uh, were more 
creative than me wow. and three percent were more flexible with me so it's <laughs> it's that space and you now you frame me in this coaching environment it's very a creative process for me being with someone and and working through things with them and I have a really flexible lifestyle yeah. where I can I'm working from home today yeah um um, the beach is just down the road like it's it really invokes that flexibility so yeah and how I work as well which align again completely to where I'm at now which is maybe a little bit more of a finding for me right in this moment of sort of that innovator creator mode yep. advising reporting and promoting uh, promoting and exploring and it's those facets of those team management wheel that is where my strengths lie so mm. a, a really incredible way to look at it and as you start to think of a team and how the dynamics work between a team is one of my weaknesses is like maybe a six percent of organizing things if you get if you get me to do any admin or organizing things mm -hmm. um just bang my head against the wall or um, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just not my forte but you get someone in that loves that stuff to support me and then where everyone else's stuff comes in together as a group, it's that classic thing of where it's it might be one plus one equals two, but it's actually not. It's one plus one equals five. Mm. It's greater than the sum of our parts, and that yeah. that's where we evolved as a as, as a human species, and where that that tribal mentality is, we're, we're bigger and better as a whole. Mm. Yeah, that's so powerful what you're saying. Dan, yeah, it's really, really cool and amazing to hear that the program had such a great uh, impact on you and probably was a start of some real pivotal decision making for you yeah. as well, mm, mm -hmm. which is great. What does community look like to you? You know, you've you came along to our recent Nelson alumni drinks. Mm -hmm. uh, how did that impact you? What was it like? Yeah, it was amazing. I I can't even. I don't know if it's the state that I'm in now and very open and a little bit more extroverted in the space and just really curious about people wanting to help them so much. But I think it was a lot deeper than that. It was really fascinating and great to be around that there was like 10, 10 business owners in Nelson and leaders and some of them brought a plus one. And mm. it just had that intimacy too, where we had really deep conversations and um, there's a couple of people there that are well-known leaders of not only Nelson product, but New Zealand product. Yeah. And it's like, I can't even put it into words. It's it's like it's a bigger, um, man, I can't even put it to words. It was just it's the best networking event I've ever been to. Wow. And it just had so much of that connection to it. Yeah, that's so cool. Uh, I'd love to hear a bit about what excites you about the year mm -hmm. ahead. Um, I know you're so passionate about what you do, which mm -hmm. we love. And just want to thank you again, Dan, for being so vulnerable in, in this conversation. You know, we're on a Zoom call, um, yet you haven't let it stop you from being real about your experience mm -hmm. um, and creating value for listeners on the other side. So thank you again for that. Um, but what excites you about 2023? Uh -huh. It's funny because um, I, I just I, re I get really excited about coaching and often when someone might ask me a question, I'm I'm really great at directing it back and I, I just I feel <laughs> cheeky then wanting to get you to answer the question, but I won't put you on the spot. Um, <laughs> you can put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the the just really serving people and helping people. Um, sometimes I keep phrasing myself as a CFO that's gone rogue, like the commercial <laughs> element. I just I just ultimately want to be there and help people. Yeah. Um, I want to share a little bit more around this burnout story side of things. So the next challenge for me this year is entering the public speaking route. Um, something that right. I've been very apprehensive about from past. So everyone has bad experiences in that space. But I'll, when I touched on before about my purpose is to fully express myself. Mm. That is an avenue of where I can express myself. So it's it's through those modalities of coaching, speaking, and and I do, I do enjoy writing as well because mm. as books had a massive impact on on that learning process. Um, so I just want more and more of that out in the world. And 
just want to make my mark in some aspect on that space and mm. ultimately it comes with that groundedness of really deeply wanting to help help people mm. um, and people that are struggling and and taking people to the next level in the high performance space yeah awesome yeah you're so genuine in what you're saying too um, it's not one part of me that doubts us um, that you are so excited for the year ahead and and the impact that you're going to have on the people around you. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes and also uh, being part of that journey as well and sharing and raising awareness of burnout and um, uh, being a high performer. Um, you know, speaking from experience, uh, like have had my own personal journey in the burnout uh, space at a young age and was mm. such an eye opener to me uh, around actually it can be a, it's a personal uh, thing that we have to take um, control of and make decisions around to protect ourselves, but then also how can business owners and leaders support their people um, mm. to flourish? Because exactly what you said, you know, if they feel safe, if they feel uh in control of their emotion and their mental health, they will, you know, the, these people will become really great performers. Uh, you'll see success in your business. You'll see great culture uh, and it's a win-win for both sides. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really have been lapping up the words that you've spoken in this conversation. Uh, it's yeah, been quite uh, a cool experience for me to hear it from professional now too. Mm -hmm. um, and I know others in this, um, in this community will be hanging on to those words as well, Dan. So mm -hmm. thank you uh, to finish up. Um, I could just encourage you for ages so I'll, I'll stop like I'm such a you know I just keep rambling with my thank you and my my encouragement but I really do mean it um, to finish this conversation up I'd love for you to let us know how people can get in touch with you if they want to contact you maybe they've got a personal question they want to ask you or even just go hey how can I get involved in some of this you know this coaching that you're doing uh, how can they get in touch with you Dan? Yeah, so best way best way to get in touch with me is um, I'm quite active on LinkedIn, so anyone can send me a message, and that that's me on the other end of that. Perfect. Um, and my website adventuredexcellence.com, and my email is also Daniel at adventuredexcellence.com. If anyone wants to reach out and ask a question, I'd I'd love love to help anyone out there. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. And. Uh, I could talk for another 45 minutes, mm -hmm. another hour. We could keep chatting. Um, and maybe at some point we'll do a part two. But uh, honestly, Dan, thanks so much for being on the Ice House podcast and um, looking forward to working with you more in the future. 100%. Me too. And I really appreciate you, Briar, and the work that you do too. And um, I'm really glad that, that that aspect of community and the work that you do in this space is really helping people. So um, just... Awesome, awesome work. Keep up with this fantastic work that you're doing. And um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of what, what you're doing here. And I listen to, to these, these Ice House podcasts as well. And, and they're really incredible for people. So keep up the great work. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that.